In this video, I will be answering few important multiple choice questions on psychrometry, psychrometric processes and air washers. While answering these questions, I will also discuss some key concepts behind these answers. So let's start right away with the first question. If during a psychrometric process, there is only latent heat transfer involved, then which of the following psychrometric properties remains constant? A. Dry bulb temperature B. Wet bulb temperature C. Dew point temperature or D. None of these The answer to this question is A. Dry bulb temperature Now let us understand this with the help of a psychrometric chart Now there are only two psychrometric processes which involve only latent heat transfer. These processes are dehumidification and humidification. So let us consider an example of a humidification process 1, 2. So as is seen from the figure, a humidification process is a vertical line on the psychrometric chart which coincides with constant dry bulb temperature lines. Hence, the dry bulb temperature for both point 1 and point 2 lie on the same point. However, the dew point temperature lines are represented by uniformly spaced horizontal lines. Hence, the dew point temperature for point 1 and point 2 do not coincide. Similar is the case for wet bulb temperature which are represented by the inclined uniformly spaced lines. In this case, the wet bulb temperature for point 1 and point 2 are not the same. Question number 2. For air with a relative humidity of 80%, A. The dry bulb temperature is less than the wet bulb temperature. B. The dew point temperature is less than the wet bulb temperature. C. The dew point and wet bulb temperatures are equal or D. The dry bulb and dew point temperatures are equal. The answer to this question is B. The dew point temperature is less than the wet bulb temperature. Now, in the given question, the relative humidity is 80%. This means the air is unsaturated. For unsaturated air, the dew point, wet bulb and the dry bulb temperature are not the same. In such cases, the dry bulb temperature is greater than the wet bulb temperature which is again greater than the dew point temperature. In case of saturated air, the three temperatures dry bulb, wet bulb and dew point temperature are the same. Hence in this question only point B is correct. During chemical dehumidification process of air, A. Dry bulb temperature and specific humidity decreases. B. Dry bulb temperature increases and specific humidity decreases. C. Dry bulb temperature decreases and specific humidity increases. Or D. Dry bulb temperature and specific humidity increases. Since the process is a dehumidification process, hence the specific humidity cannot increase. So we can eliminate option C and D. Now let us see out of A and B which one is correct. So it's B. Dry bulb temperature increases and specific humidity decreases. Now in a chemical dehumidification process, the air is passed through a hygroscopic material which adsorbs moisture from the air. In this process, the specific humidity of air decreases because of loss of moisture. If the system is thermally isolated, then the enthalpy of air remains constant. And when specific humidity drops at constant enthalpy, there is a rise in temperature. Now, if these were the only energies involved, the process would be the inverse of adiabatic saturation process. But in general, adsorption of water is an exothermic reaction. Hence, instead of it being a constant enthalpy process, there is a slight rise in enthalpy of air. 
Atmospheric air at a flow rate of 3 kg per second on dry basis enters a cooling and dehumidifying coil with an enthalpy of 85 kJ per kg of dry air and humidity ratio of 19 grams per kg of dry air. The air leaves the coil with an enthalpy of 43 kJ per kg of dry air and a humidity ratio of 8 grams per kg of dry air. If the condensate water leaves the coil with an enthalpy of 67 kJ per kg, the required cooling capacity of the coil in kilowatt is A. 75 B. 123.8 C. 128.2 or D. 159 At this point, you may pause the video to solve the problem and resume when ready with the answer. So the correct option is C. 128.2 now let us see how we can solve this this figure here shows a cooling and dehumidification process now the total enthalpy change can be divided into the latent heat and sensible heat components now in this case the specific enthalpy change of air is the difference between the inlet enthalpy and the outlet enthalpy which comes out to be 42 kJ per kg of dry air. Also, the amount of condensate can be found by the difference between the inlet specific humidity and the exit specific humidity, which comes out to be 11 gram per kg of dry air. Therefore, the required cooling capacity of the coil can be calculated as shown here. Ma is the mass flow rate of dry air. Del HA as calculated above is 42 kJ per kg of dry air and MW is the mass of the condensate, HW is the enthalpy of the condensate hence it comes out to be 128.211 kW. If a mass of moist air in an airtight vessel is heated to a higher temperature then Specific humidity of the air increases. Specific humidity of the air decreases. Relative humidity of the air increases. Relative humidity of the air decreases. Since the air is heated in an airtight vessel, there cannot be any addition of moisture. Hence, the specific humidity cannot change. Thus, the process is sensible heating. And during sensible heating, the air moves away from the saturation line thus the relative humidity decreases so the correct option is d relative humidity of air decreases during heating and humidification process the relative humidity decreases remains constant increases or d may increase or decrease so the correct answer here is D, it may increase or decrease. To understand this, let us again go back to the psychrometric chart. Say we have a process 1, 2, which is a heating and humidification process. In this case, point 2 is further away from the saturation line, which means the relative humidity decreases. But we can also have another heating and humidification process 1, 3, in which case point 3 is closer to the saturation line. Thus, the relative humidity increases. Thus, we see that the relative humidity may increase or decrease during heating and humidification. Now, whether the relative humidity may, will increase or decrease depends on the sensible heat factor. For a process with higher sensible heat factor, the relative humidity decreases, whereas for a process with low sensible heat factor, the relative humidity increases because in that case, the humidification process is more dominant. The wet bulb temperature is less than the dry bulb temperature for saturated air, unsaturated air, both saturated and unsaturated air and D none of the above 
so the correct answer to this is unsaturated air as already discussed in a previous question at saturation both dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures are equal the horizontal and uniformly spaced lines on a psychrometric chart indicate a dry bulb temperature b humidity ratio c specific enthalpy d specific volume so the correct answer to this question is specific humidity also known as humidity ratio now the dry bulb temperature lines are vertical and uniformly spaced whereas the specific enthalpy lines coincide with the wet bulb temperature lines which are inclined the specific volume lines are also inclined but at a different inclination which of the following can be used to op directly obtain dew point temperature of air a sling psychrometer b anemometer c saturation temperature corresponding to the actual partial pressure of water in air obtained from the steam table or d carrier's equation now the sling psychrometer gives us the value of dry bulb and wet bulb temperature but it does not directly give us the dew point temperature anemometers are used to measure air velocity in ducts carrier's equation gives us the actual partial pressure of water vapor in the air so the correct option is c during which of the following processes the wet bulb temperature of air remains constant a sensible cooling b humidification c adiabatic saturation or d cooling and dehumidification so the correct answer for this is c adiabatic saturation during sensible cooling wet bulb temperature decreases whereas it decreases during humidification this is the adiabatic saturation process it occurs along the constant wet bulb temperature line which coincides with constant enthalpy line in an air washer under which of the following conditions does the enthalpy of incoming air decrease spray water temperature lower than the dpt of inlet air spray water temperature lies between wbt and dbt of inlet air spray water temperature equal to wet bulb temperature of inlet air spray water temperature greater than dry bulb temperature of inlet air so the correct option is a the spray water temperature should be lower than the dpt of inlet air in an air washer under which of the following conditions cooling and humidification with net increase in specific enthalpy of air occurs spray water temperature lower than the dpt of inlet air spray water temperature in between wbt and dbt of inlet air spray water temperature equal to wbt of inlet air and spray water temperature lies between dpt and wbt of inlet air so the correct option is spray water temperature lies between wet bulb and dry bulb temperature of inlet air this figure here shows the process when the spray water temperature lies between the wet bulb temperature and the dry bulb temperature so the process is cooling and humidification with an increase in the enthalpy because the specific heat transfer is from air to water and the latent heat transfer is from water to air but the total heat transfer is from water to air choose the correct statements from the following number 1 increase in air velocity across a heating coil increases the bypass factor number 2 during sensible cooling wet bulb depression increases number 3 chemical dehumidification is an endothermic process the options are a one only b one and three c one and two or d two only now we already discussed in a previous question that chemical dehumidification is an exothermic process 
so we can eliminate option B now during sensible cooling wet bulb depression increases is not correct so we can eliminate option C and D so the only option correct is option A that is one only when the air velocity increases the contact time between the air and the coil decreases hence increasing the bypass factor for heating and humidification carried out in an air washer which of the following statements is not true both sensible heat and latent heat transfers are from water to air the relative humidity may rise or fall for the process to continue the spray water has to be heated externally d the sensible heat transfer is from water to air and latent heat transfer is from air to water now here we have to identify the false statement as discussed in the previous question the statement b is correct the relative humidity may rise or fall also under this condition both sensible heat and latent heat transfers are from water to air hence th there is a drop in enthalpy of the water which has to be externally heated to continue the process hence option a and option c are also correct so the answer to this question is d the sensible heat transfer is from water to air and latent heat transfer is from air to water this figure here shows the process during which of the following psychrometric processes the sensible heat factor is equal to 1 adiabatic saturation sensible heating cooling and dehumidification or humidification so the correct answer to this question is sensible heating as we can see here sensible heat factor is a ratio of sensible heat and total heat which is the sum of latent heat and sensible heat in case of a sensible heating process the latent heat component is zero hence the ratio is equal to one so sensible heat factor for sensible heating process is one while it is zero for humidification and it lies between zero and one for cooling and dehumidification if you found the video helpful leave a like comment below and share it also subscribe if you haven't already for future updates thank you for watching